Ever seen our stories on computer predators? Yeah. This is one of them. Oh, no. Why did you come here in the first place? To see a 13-year-old girl. I turn on the webcam, and his reaction is, you are so hot. What grade do you teach? Sixth grade. So you teach kids about the same age as the girl you were coming to see. I'm ashamed. So am I going to be on TV or what? They're still out there, and we're still exposing them. A new Dateline investigation to catch a predator for. Predators scouring the Internet, targeting children for sex. It's a national problem that Dateline has helped uncover. Good evening and welcome to Dateline. I'm Stone Phillips. I'm Ann Curry. We received such an overwhelming response from our last investigation, some 15,000 emails from parents, grandparents, teachers, and law enforcement, and here's what they had to say, quote, keep up the good work. Keep the issue alive. You're impacting lives. So tonight we're back with our fourth undercover investigation. This time we travel to small town America. Even far from big cities and suburbs, vulnerable young teens are not far from danger. A warning, some of what you're about to see is explicit. Here's Chris Hansen. Do you watch Dateline NBC? Uh, when I can. Have you ever seen our stories on computer predators? No, I haven't seen it, but I've heard about them. We've set up a new computer sex predator operation in a new location, but this man's excuse sounds pretty old. And what have you heard about those stories? That people or there's pedophilers out there, but that's not my intention tonight. I just wanted to have a party and have a good time. Hello? One more second, I gotta change my shirt. Okay. Two years ago, Dateline launched an undercover investigation into online sexual predators. Hey, how are you? Okay. Could you explain yourself? And we had no idea we were about to expose a national epidemic. Adults trolling the internet, looking to meet young teens for sex. What are you doing as a, a man of God, as a rabbi? Our investigations revealed the enormity of the problem. Over the course of three undercover stings, we exposed like almost 90 men. Possibly you would have had sex with a 13-year-old boy. Our past investigations have been in major metropolitan areas. The first near New York City the second in a suburb of Washington, D.C., and the third close to Los Angeles. Okay. Get up. Turn around. Put your hands behind your back. Could it be that this is a crime that only happens in and around big cities? Or does it happen everywhere? Even in rural America. Tonight, our fourth investigation into Internet predators. Only this time, we're going straight to the heartland. Greenville, Ohio. Population 13,000. We're in the middle of nowhere. We're 45 minutes outside of Dayton, and we're five, six hours from Chicago. Nestled among the cornfields and cow pastures, we found this large house, just the right size for our crew and specialty cameras. All right, Dell's doing a great job. She's got the guy. He's Frag there. and Dell, their screen names, are from PervertedJustice.com, an online watchdog group that for the last four years has been catching Internet sex predators and exposing them. 4 o'clock p.m. is Gear Jammer. We hired the organization as consultants so we could watch them do what they normally do, go into chat rooms and pose as 12 to 15-year-olds, home alone, interested in having sex. I'm pretty much the only one here. <laughs> so while the perverted justice decoys troll chat rooms, our crews set up 11 hidden cameras, seven outside covering all angles of the driveway, side, and back of the house, and four cameras on the inside. What you're about to see happen to this man emerging from the shadows is going to repeat itself over and over again at our undercover house. He's 40-year-old Alonzo Wade. He's been chatting online about sex with a girl who said she was 15. When she says she's worried she'll get pregnant, he says, I am fixed. He drives 104 miles, more than two hours, to meet the young teen home alone. And look, he's loaded down with alcohol. Come on! Dell, pretending to be the young girl, waves him in. Where are you? I'm just going upstairs to get a band aid. I'm going to break down, okay? All right. Then he appears to pull down the zipper on the front of his pants. <coughs> what he's planning to do next, we'll never know. How are you tonight? Fine. 
he stops as soon as he sees me. Now, what were you doing with your pants there when you were heading towards the door? My zipper came down, excuse me. I was just going to go outside and make sure everything's okay. Well, you brought quite the selection tonight. Yes, sir. What do we have here? Well, that's mine. Alonzo claims the 12 pack of beer and two six packs of Mike's Hard Lemonade are all just for him. Were you going to give any to the 15 year old? Oh, no, 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 no. I don't do that. And you I got a 15 year old daughter myself. Well, come I on. Asked Alonzo, what, you brought the 12 pack and two six packs. Here I to said, this house. What, what? what did she like to drink? That day I say I was never what I was going to bring it. You got it in black and white that I said I'd bring it. But, and you brought it. Yes, I did. You say that. But she also asked for it. Alonzo says he didn't want to drink in front of his daughter, so he came here to drink, not to have sex. But he seems to leave the door open. It appears to be clear from this transcript that you are open to the idea of having sex with this girl. No. It, well, it appeared, yes. Would I? No. Or maybe. All right. Maybe. What is it, Alonzo? Yes, no, maybe so. Maybe. Maybe. So maybe, maybe you would have had sex with this girl. Maybe. What should happen to you, Alonzo? I should go to jail. And that's exactly what's about to happen. Sheriff's office, put the beer down, right down. Put it down, put your hands in the air. Like our most recent investigation, Perverted Justice is cooperating with local law enforcement, providing the Dark County, Ohio Sheriff's men with the evidence needed to make an arrest. Here in Ohio, showing up for sex with a minor after soliciting them online is a felony. After deputies read Alonzo his rights... Sir, listen to me right now. Yes, sir. You have the right to remain silent. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. He's taken in for questioning. Spread your feet apart for me. Photographed, fingerprinted, and put behind bars. Detective Mike Burns of the Dark County Sheriff's Department says he contacted Perverted Justice about doing a sting operation because he was looking for a way to combat Internet predators in his area. It was just a, a miracle from from heaven as far as meeting our needs because we're struggling so badly to get things going that, you know, here it is, here's the answers for you. The detective and his men will conduct their stakeout from the house across the street and in the mobile home behind our house. Just as they did with Alonzo, once a suspected predator goes in the house, Detective Burns will have his men move into place, ready to make the arrest. Where are you at? Get ready for the parade of potential predators, this time here in the heartland of America. Up next, you may be surprised who exactly does come calling, a fireman and a student at an evangelical Christian college. I don't know if I'd really be able to go through with it. But you walked in the door. To Catch a Predator 4 returns in a moment. Our latest computer predator investigation is in full swing. All 11 of our hidden cameras are in place. And a suspected sex predator who approaches the house will be videotaped from the minute he pulls into the driveway Run into his car. until the sheriff's men spring into action. Sheriff's office, let me see your hands. Get on the ground! Get down! Arrest him. You have the right to main sign. You understand that right? Yes. And take him away in handcuffs. More than 20 Perverted Justice members are in Ohio and surrounding area chat rooms posing as 12 to 15 year olds. They've set up profiles using pictures of young teens and posted personal information like age, sex and location. Some of the profiles are on social networking websites like MySpace and TeenSpot. The decoys from Perverted Justice are waiting to be instant messaged by a potential predator. In a matter of seconds, men start hitting on the decoys. This man, screen name Green Eyed 121, even goes so far as to suggest phone sex. He found our 13 year old decoy, Katie Did Sings, on MySpace.com. He types I have an idea, but it's a little weird. What? I did it with another girl, but I don't know if you want to. Call me up and let me listen to you as you yourself to orgasm. The decoy quickly declines the offer, saying her dad wants her to get off the computer and come downstairs. Green-Eyed 121 doesn't seem to mind. After all, he's already made a date for sex with her in person. Katie Did Sings told him she would be home alone for the weekend. I have good news. I can come over Friday and stay the night, too. They used to come all the way back, all the way back. Green-Eyed 121 is scheduled to arrive at our undercover house around noon. Sure enough, 
here he is, right on time. Our hidden cameras are rolling. Quiet, quiet, quiet. He's 23-year-old Nathan Donhauer. He says he's a student at an evangelical university. And what does he plan to do with Katie Did Sings? His chat log is quite explicit. My hands will travel down your smooth body till we reach your pants. Here we will remove your pants and underwear, revealing your beautiful nude body. And like so many of the other potential predators, his chat turns too X-rated for network television. And now he's in our living room. Hey, Nathan. Yep. I just cut the crap out of my toe. I'm getting a Band-Aid. Hold out the kitchen counter for a second, okay? Okay. Can you do me a favor and just go ahead and seat right on the other side of our please? He drove more than an hour to keep his date for sex with a girl he thought was 13 and home alone. But he says by the time he got to the door, he changed his mind. I don't know if I'd really be able to go through with it. But you walked in the door. And as I read some of what he said online, he doesn't sound like a man who plans to back out. You get into very graphic detail mm -hmm. about what you want to do to him. Fantasies dreamed up online or in your mind things you might not be able to willingly do when it comes down to it. I will gently cup and massage your soft breasts, kiss them, and run my tongue along them. Mm -hmm. And it goes on mm -hmm. from there, in graphic detail. What are we to make of this? I'm not sure. I don't know what the law says about this. Well, it's illegal. But nothing has happened yet. Well, I know. But it's illegal for someone to use the internet to solicit somebody who's 13 for sex. Hmm. That I was unaware of. Sheriff's off, get on the ground. On the ground right now. On the ground! Later, you'll see Green Eyed 121 get a quick lesson on the law from detectives waiting outside. But now, another stranger has just pulled in the driveway. In the driveway, in our driveway. Our back. Online, he calls himself J10072960. He's also been chatting with the decoy Katie Did Sings. Remember, her profile says she's only 13. He tells her he's a fireman. Then he gets worried she's a cop. How do I know you're not a cop? Laugh out loud. Um, I'm not a cop. How do I prove it? Call my cell and leave a sexy message. She does. And then he wants to take it even further and moves on to the subject of phone sex. He asks, you like hearing guys moan? I want you to call now and make me moan. Katie Did Sing says, I will hear you when you get here. And there's something else. He seems to have a thing for feet. Want me to rub your feet? Yeah. Hmm, now I'm getting turned on. The man with the apparent foot fetish is really 21-year-old Jason Schopner. Oh, yeah. I gotta go get a band-aid for a bleed all over the rug. Oh, okay. Hey, why don't you hang out, uh, have a seat right on the other side of the bar for me, will you? Keep your hands out of your pockets. Come on, just go over and have a seat, please. No, 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 sir. Right here, please. What's going on? Uh, Why don't you tell me to get things started? Uh, tell me what was happening. I don't know. You don't know? I do, I'm sorry. You're sorry for what? You freaking idiot. And it turns out Jason really does work at a firehouse so you're as a paramedic. Now. Now, in your chat here, you essentially say you're a firefighter. Yeah. Don't you think that might impress a 13-year-old girl? Well, look, I'm sorry. I... What was your plan here today? I don't know. You don't know? I seriously don't know. Well, it looks like you knew based upon this chat. Want me to rub your feet? No, yeah. no. Okay, all right. What would have happened if I had not been here? I would have done something stupid. With a 13-year-old girl? I don't know, probably. If a 13-year-old girl had been here? Yeah. And you won't believe what else he admits. Do you ever watch television? Yeah. You ever watch Dateline? Dateline? Dateline NBC? Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen our stories on computer predators? Yeah, I've seen them. This is one of them. Oh, no. So even after seeing our previous investigations, watching men being confronted and arrested, he wasn't discouraged from doing the very same thing. And as you'll see later, he's not the only one. Yeah, and I've seen this on TV. Before. You've seen this on TV before. As this investigation continues, we hear something we've never heard before. My religion. Men talking about religion. My Bible. I have no one else to turn to but God. I go to church every Sunday. 
When we come back, how far will these guys go? A two-hour trip to meet an underage teen. What makes a man get in a car and drive two hours at two o'clock in the morning? To Catch a Predator 4 continues in a moment. We're a small community. For the most part, everybody knows everybody. Because we're in such a remote location, most of the men coming to our undercover house have to drive miles and miles over country roads. Some even cross state lines. He's coming over here. This 23-year-old drove from Fort Wayne, Indiana. It's about 103 miles, more than two hours away. He brought alcohol for someone he thinks is 13. Did you bring the mics? Yeah. Cool, I'll be right back. And this man pulling up to our house is from Reynoldsburg, Ohio, 112 miles away. He drove more than two hours to meet with someone who said she was an underage teen home alone. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. Like all the other men who visit, he has no idea our hidden cameras are rolling. Where are you at? I have to go change out of my clothes, OK? OK. Just sit at the bar for a second, OK? I'll be right back down. <laughs> A little late to be prowling around these parts, huh? Yeah, it is, isn't it? Why don't you have a seat right over here for me? His name is Tim Isaac, screen name Park and Ride 469, a 42-year-old training manager for a global transportation company. He's been chatting online this evening about having oral sex with a girl who said she was 15, Sadie the Smarty. He wants to know if the sex talk has made her aroused. Sadie the Smarty types, well, not yet. Talk doesn't do anything for me. Park and ride types back. Well, my tongue will. What makes a man get in a car and drive two hours? I don't know, just somebody wanted to meet me and I want to meet them, I guess. At two o'clock in the morning? Well, I didn't really want to, I mean, I wasn't looking for nothing. You walk into a house? Well, I wouldn't, I mean, I, I was kind of scared about it, to be honest with you, I mean. Well, you walked in? I mean, I'm not, I mean, I'm not looking for, I mean, to like, do anything or anything. I got boys that are 20 and 21, sir. Sons? Yes, sir. What if one of your kids was home alone and some guy walked in the back door just yeah. all happy as heck to be here? But to be honest have, with have you, seat. to be honest with you, I wouldn't like it. Sorry. I'm just nervous. What made you think it was okay at 42 years old to walk into a home at uh, roughly 2.30 in the morning where a 15-year-old girl was apparently home alone? Well, I wasn't for sure if she was 15 or not, to be honest. Well, that's what she said on the internet. Perhaps wow. I can refresh his memory by reading some of his chat log. You're only 15, a little young for this, aren't you? Yep, I'm 15, and no, I'm not. Okay. Are you still a virgin? <laughs> Stupid question for an older man to ask a girl like that. But baby 15 can get me 20. Yeah, it probably can. It probably will. You ever do any time before? Um, uh, very little time for some DUI. DUI? Yeah. Not, nothing like this, sir. God, man. You ever do this sort of thing before? No. This is the first time I ever done something like this. First time? That's the same claim we've heard from almost every man we've ever confronted. And most say they really weren't going to do anything sexual. Our sting in Ohio is no different. But one subject does come up for the first time. Religion. This is first. This is your first time? Yeah, and I thought, I'm like, uh, I shouldn't do that. It is also against my, my religion. It's I, against your religion? Mm -hmm. He's 27-year-old Davut Ozkan, screen name Naxox, a graduate student from Turkey. He had a sexually charged online chat with a decoy posing as a 15-year-old. You say at one point, I don't want to have any problem, you know. Kissing is okay. Yeah. But you also say, in the next breath, have you ever seen a blank, meaning penis? Mm -hmm. I have on the internet, she says, then you say, so do you want to see mine? It is not good. I shouldn't do that. You can play with my blank. Yes. Please don't read. You can read yourself. I mean, it sure seems like you knew what you were talking about here, and you knew what you wanted from this 15-year-old girl. I don't want to have sex, but... The 27-year-old admits he knew what he was doing was against the law. If you're so religious, if you knew it was so wrong, why did you walk into this house? I don't know. 
And he wasn't the only one claiming to be religious. Here comes 20-year-old Josh Tuttle, screen name Goodbody1330. He's been chatting online with someone who says she's 13 and a virgin, Jesse's Messy 13. After she tells him she has a big screen TV, he says, hee hee, that's great. So we can watch movies and cuddle, kiss and make out. Then head up to your bedroom and touch each other and have sex. Then he adds, we can get drunk if you want to, if it will make it feel that much better. And now here he is, walking in the door. Just sit at the bar for a second. Okay, I'll be right back down. Okay. Did you bring the rum? No. I'll explain when you get down. Okay. Well, why don't you explain it to me instead? He says he didn't bring the rum because his brother drank it. Good body 1330 goes on to explain that making the decision to come here was a tough one. He says he went to his best friend, and believe it or not, says he also turned to the church for guidance. I have low self-esteem, and I have no one else to turn to but God. So I went and I talked to my pastor. And what did this pastor tell you? It's wrong to do, and that you should have more faith in yourself. But you're here, John. To make new friends. To make new friends yes, with sir. a 13-year-old girl home alone. He says he only came here to watch movies and hang out, but his chat and something else tell a different story. Did you bring condoms with you? No, sir. There's no condoms in your pocket? I have one, but that's just... Okay, so that's one lot. I carry that with me all the time. But you said you didn't bring any, and you did. So that's a lie. Yes, sir. I corrected myself. I'm sorry. We'll hear more from Good Body so later. Now let's look exactly. at a truly unusual case. Here's a man who seems to be casing the house, afraid to pull in. After driving by several times, he finally makes his move and walks in the back door. Hello? Oh, I want to take my coat off. I'm sweating to death after I was freezing. Why don't you come on in and uh, have a seat real quick? Okay. He's 33-year-old John France, a mechanical engineer. He's been chatting online with a decoy who says she's 14. Unlike all the men you've met so far, France, whose screen name is Net Buckeye, is very careful when it comes to talking about sex. When the decoy, Chicky Girl, asks, got any condoms? He says, what are those? Just kidding. Then he says, no worries. She says, is that a yes? And he replies, don't worry, I'm not going to do anything without a condom. But when I confront him, he says he has no interest in sex. I'm confused, though. So if you don't have any interest in that sort of activity, why then chat up a 14-year-old girl and come to visit her? I'm lonely. <laughs> that is the bottom line. Really? Yes. Very lonely. And once again, this man also says he's religious. Isn't there a church group or a saloon? or? It, there is. I, mean, I go to church every Sunday. And it's like, and in fact, I'm going to a new church now because I'm not happy with my old one. But so does this new church uh, teach that it's okay to come over and visit 14-year-old girls? Or I would home say alone they, would no not, parents? they would not recommend that. No. Then, France says room. something we've never heard before. Can I have you read something? Sure. He tells us that out in his car, there's an envelope on the passenger seat, so Dell goes out to get it. I was concerned for my safety. To, it, you have to understand, I mean, things like that happen. People, you show up and people, somebody beats you up or something like that? Well, yeah, yeah, stuff like that. I mean, or worse, I mean, they could have taken my life for all I know. He opens the note and starts to read. At 8 p.m. tonight, I'm meeting a person whom I met online. Who he goes on to say that the girl tried to lure him into talking about sex, me, which he politely declined, and that he's Netflix suspicious Netflix. about her identity. If she really is who she says she is, my intention is to befriend her and try to mentor her. So could and this man really be here just to mentor a troubled teen? Detective Burns says he's not buying this story. Well, we refer to it at the office as an alibi letter. Alibi letter. Yeah. It was composed in such a way that it's our belief that he po put it there, that if he should get caught, made it appear that he was completely innocent. And the detective says the way France cased our house does not make him look like a man on a rescue mission. When you look at a vehicle that pulls up in front and stops, drives by, comes back, does the same thing again, 
if it is his intent that he's going to go in there and counsel her with this girl, why would you struggle with that issue? I think we saw the battle from within as to whether or not he was going to get caught. How you doing? But because his case is so unusual, right. he doesn't get arrested. At this time, we just want to talk to you. Until yeah. after his interrogation. Sheriff's office, get your hands up, get on the ground! Get on the ground! For all the other men, the detectives don't hesitate to take them into custody. You have the right to remain silent. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. What will they say when we tell them they're about to be exposed on national TV? I'm ashamed. And if you put this on the air, I'll sue. Coming up, the suspects walk out. The police move in. We'll take you inside the interrogation room. The whole plan was to have sex with this 13-year-old when he got here, correct? That was the original plan. When To Catch a Predator 4 continues. Welcome back to Dateline's fourth undercover investigation into online sex predators. This time, we're far from the bright lights of America's big cities and suburbs and in the heart of rural America, Greenville, Ohio, a community of just 13,000 people. Well, so far, we've seen how men will drive for hours crossing state lines to meet up with someone they think is an underage teen, home alone. Well, now they're about to learn what's really happening. They're being exposed on national television. Again, Chris Hansen. I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC. Oh, I understand. And we're doing a story yeah. on adults going on the internet, right. trying to hook up with teens. Right. Now, see the cameras coming in and right. everything. Remember 40-year-old Alonzo Wade? He brought a case of alcohol to meet a person he thought was 15. I know all I want to do is party. You're trying to find a pedophile. I'm not. But you're here. I'm here to party. And maybe have sex with a teenager. Maybe. Woman. He decides he's had enough, picks up his alcohol, and starts to leave. And if you put this on the air, I'll sue. Who are you, sir? A few other men head for the door as soon as they find out who I am. But even here in Ohio, many of the men keep talking, even after they find out they're going to be on TV. It's in the law's hands and in God's hands. You sound like a pretty religious guy. Yes, sir. You're free to leave, free to have your condom back. <laughs> Thank you. I'm ashamed. Okay. Truly ashamed. And what about the men who've seen our previous investigations? Do you ever watch Dateline NBC? Yeah, and I've seen this on TV. You've seen this on TV before. Remember this 23-year-old man who drove across state lines and brought alcohol for a 13-year-old? You've seen this on TV before. So you know what's about to happen then? Um, no. This is the part where I say I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC, and the cameras come out. I f okay, I realized I made, uh, coming here was a mistake. Good thing that it didn't progress to nothing further. It was a good thing that we were here and yeah. a 13-year-old girl was not. Yeah. So that's well, the good I'm, news tonight. But, I don't know, I just apologize if I offended anybody. Have you ever seen our stories on computer predators? Yeah, I've seen them. This is one of them. Oh, no. This is the 21-year-old paramedic with the apparent foot fetish who came to meet a 13-year-old. So you've seen these stories before. Yeah. Didn't you for one minute think that this might have been something just like that? Yeah. But you came anyway. It looks as if he doesn't want to leave. Since he's admitted seeing our earlier broadcasts, he probably knows what's going to happen next. Finally, after several requests... Sir, I'm going to have to ask what you're going on. He gets up and walks out the door, right into the arms of the detectives from the Dark County Sheriff's Office. Sheriff's Office, let me see your hands. Put your hands up. All along, Dell from Perverted Justice has been running across the street, giving the detectives chat logs of potential predators before they arrive. We're able to look down through the chat logs and determine whether or not the, a crime had been committed. Once uh, we knew for sure that somebody was coming, I was maintaining contact with perverted justice through radio means. Here he comes. So as the men leave, the deputies move in and arrest them. Sheriff's office, get on the ground. On the ground right now. And charge them with attempted unlawful sexual conduct with a minor, a felony. In Ohio, in order for prosecutors to file the most serious charges, a police officer needs to be involved in the online chat or phone conversation. 
Since in this case, perverted justice members are the decoys, the sheriff's department temporarily deputized the PJ volunteers who were in our house. You have the right to remain silent. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. After they are read their rights, the men are taken to this auxiliary building for an official interview. Now it's the detective's turn to ask the question. Why did you come here in the first place? To see a 13-year-old girl in that house. What they've already told Dateline is eye-opening. Now wait until you hear what they reveal to detectives. Remember Green-Eyed 121, the 23-year-old who typed a detailed description about having sex with a 13-year-old? Remember, he's a student at an evangelical Christian college. I couldn't stop thinking about it, what would happen if I got caught. I was caught. Sheriff's deputies find a box of condoms in his car. But he tells the detective they just happened to be there. Have you ever had sex before? No. Never. So you have a box of condoms with you. You've never had sex before. The whole plan was to have sex with this 13-year-old when he got here, correct? That was the original plan. Okay. He insists he wasn't going to go through with it. Detectives also question the 42-year-old who showed up at 2 in the morning planning to meet a girl who told him she was 15. I have to go change out of my clothes, okay? Okay. He tries to convince the detective he had no intention of having sex with a 15-year-old. You would like me to believe that um, you just traveled 112 miles for a couple of hours you know what? Ride. I would like just, you to believe that. Just to visit a 15-year-old girl yep. whose parents aren't home and you want her to keep that a secret? Yep. Okay. And you want you still have me believe that despite the fact I have Chad in here about you talking about are you wet yet? I well, I'd like for this. you to think the better half of me, but you got what you got there and it's not doesn't look good on me. It doesn't look good for this man either, the 21-year-old paramedic who has a thing for feet. What did uh, you and Kat discuss or plan specifically to do once you met her knowing she was 13 years old? Hang out. Hang out? Nothing else? I, get, um, I don't know. I guess sexual stuff. I guess. Sexual stuff? Like what? You're talking about kissing and Kiss, what else? rubber feet, stuff like that. Rubber feet? Yeah. Once the interrogations are over, the men are taken to the county jail where they're photographed. Don't take. Fingerprinted. Give me your right hand. Your thumb. Strip searched and put behind bars, awaiting a hearing before a judge. Most face up to 18 months in prison. Where are you? But our story doesn't end there. The next man you'll meet has a dark secret, a secret that's about to come out, and it's going to shock an entire community. Why don't you just tell me what you do for a living? I'd rather not say. Coming up, a potential predator asks to see his prey. Where are you? And he does, but it's not who he thinks. I was like, well, are you going to call if you're coming or if you're not coming? He's like, I'll call either way. When to Catch a Predator 4 continues. going to call if you're coming or the decoy you see chatting is a 19 year old actress we've hired her to play the role of a young teen on the phone right, but i'd really like to see you and on a webcam all right let's pull up my webcam first this potential predator thinks he's chatting with our actress who's posing as a 13 year old virgin it's actually dell from perverted justice typing on the computer He's 26-year-old James Rutherford, screen name IU Rutherford. He's been chatting online for more than a week with Princess Danica. And he started out very slowly, trying to convince her that he could be trusted. He was a good guy. He ended up getting on webcam. And what does the 26-year-old do with his webcam? He starts putting on a show. He takes off his shirt, flexes his muscles, and even shows off his pierced tongue. He tries to convince the decoy to do a bit of a show as well. Several times he asks the actress to show him her stomach. She finally agrees and he says, nice tummy, hon, I want to lick that. Then he says, I owe you something now, don't I? And then he starts pulling the boxers down a little bit. Doesn't go all the way down. Remember, he's talking to an actress who he thinks is 13 as he watches her on a webcam. As the chat progresses and plans are made to meet, he types, I'm so freaking horny. You know, if you had me naked, I'd want more, right? 
But just before he gets in his car to come over, he calls. I was really looking forward to it. That's not fair. I'm so bored here. It appears the man is having second thoughts. Could it be that he's actually having a change of heart and is questioning his own behavior? I was like, well, are you going to call if you're coming or if you're not coming? He's like, I'll call either way. A few hours go by and we don't hear anything from Rutherford. We assume he's not coming. Okay, gotcha. I'm familiar with that approach. Until suddenly, someone spots him pulling into the driveway. That's his red Corvette driving around to the back of the house. The decoy goes out to wave him in. Come on in. The door's open! Where are you? Oh, I'm just gonna go finish getting ready. I'll be right there. Come here. No, I promise I'll be right back. No, come here. I'll be right there. Come just here. wait. Gotta be a little patient. Actually, I want you to come here. That's what I thought. Rutherford says he had a feeling this was a setup. Still, there was no denying what he'd been up to. Who did you think you were going to meet here? Just this kid I've been talking to. This kid? I know she's a kid. How old? 13, 14. 13. And how old are you? Too old for 13, 14 year old. Too old. But and there's one thing he doesn't want to tell us. What do you do for a living, Jim? I'd rather not say. Who do you work for? I'll get to that in a minute. No, I'd, I'd really like to know. I'm sure I'm on TV or something right now. Apparently, the man has seen our investigations before and doesn't want to reveal what he does for a living on national TV. So I ask him again. Why don't you just tell me what you do for a living? I'm a teacher. And what grade do you teach? Sixth grade. Sixth grade. So you teach kids about the same age as the girl you were coming to see. James Rutherford is a sixth grade teacher at a Catholic school in Cincinnati, where he also coaches track. He drove two hours to get here. I would never do anything. I don't know why I'm here. You were on your webcam, showing off in front of this 13-year-old girl. I know. And the conversation you had with this girl... Well, that's bad. I know. I know. I don't know why. I need help. Then the teacher offers this excuse. I am going through a divorce. My wife Thursday told me she was leaving me. Yeah, but that doesn't make it right for you to I know. have this kind of I know. discussion. I know, and I shouldn't have. The teacher admits he's chatted with underage kids before and was worried that it had become a problem for him, a serious problem that was getting worse. I've thought about this a lot for years. Maybe I should just stop. Maybe I should get counseling. Maybe I should get help. And I always thought, well, it's not that big a deal. I've never taken it to this step. I don't know if this week has just pushed me over the edge. But fortunately, well, he's fallen over the edge into our undercover investigation and instead of an encounter with a real child. Do you ever watch Dateline NBC? Oh, damn, I've seen one of these. You've seen one of these? Yeah. You know, that's, and that was what, one of the reasons I thought, why am I doing this? This could be a setup. You've actually seen our previous programs on computer predators. I didn't think I was a predator. I wasn't out. I wasn't coming up here for anything physical. That's a common excuse we've heard again and again, and this man knows it. I know you've heard this. Hell, I've seen people sit here and say the same stuff. You were suspicious. You had seen our previous stories. Probably got a chuckle out of what happened to some of these guys. Yeah, and honestly, I sat there and watched and thought, those guys are sick. Why would you do that? And that was, what, a month? A month and a half ago? And then, here I am. But what about the young students he comes in contact with every day? Has this teacher ever crossed that line? His online chat comes uncomfortably close. I could be your teacher. Would you flirt with me? She says wink at you and stuff. Hee <laughs> hee, okay. I've never, ever crossed a line like that with a, a, a person that I was a student, ever. Not even thought about it. I guess maybe it was just like online, it was like they weren't real. But I guess the question that some people might ask is this. If you eventually evolve to the point where you'd come here to meet a 13-year-old girl after this kind what of conversation, at what point do you suddenly become interested in kids in, in the school you teach? Right. Brian, it's a legitimate question. What he talked to us for more than 40 minutes. Several times he asked, are the police outside? Am I going to get arrested? In fact, while he was inside, detectives from the Dark County Sheriff's Office had moved into place and were waiting to arrest him. Well, Jim, I appreciate that. I'm sorry. I mean, and tell that kid I'm sorry, too. All right. I will.
In the end, what started as a possible meeting with a child ends in an encounter with police. Sheriff's Department, stop putting your hands on your head. In which he confesses even more during interrogation. I think you do have a problem. Obviously. And you've admitted that, okay? That you have talked to minors before 13 years of age. Do you masturbate while you're doing this? Sometimes. Okay. I have, yeah. So you're so driven by this, okay? But sir, and it's not okay, like just it's... listen to me. Well, well no, okay. I think I, I feel like I should at least tell you. It's not like it's... I go on there specifically looking for little kids. Tuck your head. Regardless of his explanation, the teacher is transported, just like all the other men, to the county jail, where he's photographed... Turn to your right. ...fingerprinted, strip-searched, and thrown in jail. From his jail cell, he calls his employer. Uh, he resigned that position yesterday in order to spare his students and... What happens to him next is in the court's hands. ...bound to surround this case. Coming up, a reality check for parents. What's your child doing online? We ask America's teens when the Catch a Predator 4 continues. All of our predator investigations have been predicated on the idea that teenagers are willing and sometimes eager to share very personal information online. Well, what are kids really up to on the computer? They may not always want to tell you, but they did tell us in a new nationwide survey. It comes down to one simple rule, experts say. Kids online should mean parents on alert. If you could actually look through cyber glasses and see who's peering in your window, who's reading your daughter's blog, who's cyber-stalking your son, it is reality. Do teens let strangers into their online world? In a survey conducted by the intelligence group, Dateline questioned 500 teenagers across the country, ages 14 to 18, about their computer habits. When asked if they chat online to people they've never met before, an overwhelming majority said yes, whether it's all the time, sometimes, or not very often. When asked if someone they've met online has wanted to meet them in person, 58% said yes, and 29% said they had a scary experience online. What about personal information, tools a predator can use like a name, a picture, an address, a birthday? When asked if they talk about personal information on the internet, about half the teens said yes, they do. We also asked if they did things online they would not want their parents to know about. Again, about half said yes. More than 90% told us that they were responsible when they used the computer. But what about friends, classmates, other teens? The answer, a big no. Most said other teens are not behaving responsibly online, which should be a red flag to parents. Where are you at? And that brings us back to the parade of suspected predators in Ohio. Next week, we'll return to the heartland. What's going to happen when some of the men you've seen tonight appear in court? The maximum penalty uh, is up to 12 months in prison. Also, we'll expose more suspects looking to meet young teens. That's our boy. He's here. This man says he's innocent, but his story is especially frightening. What then are you doing in this house? less than a week before you're supposed to be in court and go to prison for doing the very same thing. Join us next Wednesday night at 9, 8 central for To Catch a Predator 5. And you can log on to our website for a series of guidelines on how to protect your children from Internet predators. The address is dateline.msnbc.com. On Dateline Saturday night, a woman is determined to find the man who murdered her sister. They were twins bound by a mysterious connection. I don't go a second of a minute of an hour of a day without thinking about her. When one sister disappeared, the other set out to prove what happened. To find the truth, she dressed like her, talked like her, tried to become her. It was a dangerous journey. It was the scariest moment of my entire life. There was guns around and there was bullets. One that almost got her killed. Do you want me to do anything else? Of her completely. That's what happened to her sister. A dark tale of blood ties. And that's all for this edition of Dateline Wednesday. I'm Ann Curry. And I'm Stone Phillips. We'll see you again for Dateline Saturday night at 8, 7 central. For all of us at NBC News, good night. <laughs>